Hello, my friends. Welcome to VK's broadcast video. On June the ninth, this Thursday, we will receive companions update of Glacia, Christina, Iris, and Maria. In Korea, almost eighty percent players introduced Christina into their build, while over sixty percent deployed Glacia. Both Maria and Iris. Have a usage rate over ninety percent in the Novice Arena, so all of the four units will be mainstream. But look at what the tricky developer is doing. Both Christina and Glacier are useless unless maxed plus five fifteen. So we need tons of Soul Gear footers to upgrade their Soul Gears. But the Soul Gear discount event is two weeks later. Then the companions update. They are saying more so gears, further or more arena points. Decide. Okay, I surrender. I'll build Christina first and delay Glacier after the event starts. So let's talk about Christina first. Her attack is six hundred and forty-five. Not very high, but she can attack five times in a turn. And the attack is reduced by thirty-five percent. That means the actual attack will be a little bit lower than two thousand and one one hundred without so gears and ruins. That's pretty high, and she has a five percent defense herself, and very decent crit rate and crit damage. So. She has a hundred percent defense and debuff immunity while attacking only at plus fifteen. Five percent at ninety-five percent. There are so many Rafithia and Grandhilda in the arena, so I don't think a plus fourteen or lower one without a hundred percent defense can often finish her five attacks in the second round. And there's third skill based on enemy HP loss rate and attack. It re relies on how much you can damage with your normal attack. If the enemy has a skill or buff to heal after receiving normal attack, and the healing amount can make up the damage made by Christina's normal attack. Then the additional damage would be pretty low, even zero. The awakening skill deals DOT damage to different enemies. For defenders, it ignores defense, and for other units, it ignores incoming damage reduction. Why is she so popular in the Korea server? You can consider her as a warrior version Catherine. With a hundred percent defense, debuff immunity while attacking, and their names sound similar. As we all know, Bansina is shining now in the arena. But after the update, you know a lot of players use Christina as our initiator. You can see the order most of the time from three to five, usually right after the supporters and the magicians. She can kill a lot of things, so most of the time our Bansina taunts after Christina attacks, and the enemy's Christina goes right into her. So Bansina can no longer survive as long as she used to be. That's why she's peaked. Bansina can be killed by Christina's bleeding damage in several turns. If your Bansina is at a very high skill level, Lucius plus zero to plus eight one shot KO by Christina, plus nine or plus ten can survive with one or two death scar chances left. Other familiar defenders like Glacia, Cecilia, Kaoli, and Ludia, all of them get killed directly or by bleeding DOT damage. High skill level Memner can survive if Christina don't have unremovable buffs on her. 
for example, Stella and Michaela, because she can remove the buffs from Christina, and she has debuff immunity. She will not receive any DOT damage, and Christina's third skill's additional damage will always be zero before she can remove Memner's energy guard. And the last defender, Grand Hilda. High skill level one will survive, or Low skill level with Rafisia's buff will survive. Uh, with decent buffs, Christina can kill low skill level one before she gets incoming damage reduction from her taunt or Rafi's buff. So for defenders, only high skill level legend units can survive. All non-legend defenders are rubbish in front of Christina. Levia. With defensive runes and high skill level, maybe we need plus 6 to plus 8 to have enough incoming damage reduction and max life heal after getting attacked to keep Christina's third skill's damage zero. So high skill level Livia can survive. Nadas also has a very high incoming damage reduction and debuff immunity. I think with Rafithia's buff and defensive runes, he can also survive, but I don't think anyone will do that, so Natas dies. Lilian survived before she launches attack with 100% defense. Well, Fern with high skill level and vital runes, as well as enough buff with incoming damage reduction. He might have a chance to survive. Oh, Christina doesn't have any buffs on her. Most of the time, Velfen will die. Now, Warriors, Del V and Angelica with 100% defense, debuff immunity. They will survive. Of course, Del V dies if she's in human form. At Dean, after plus 15, 100% defense, he can survive Christina alone, but will get killed if he got Celia's stigma before Christina comes in. All the other units are without either DOT immunity or 100% defense, no doubt die, including Christina herself. All the units with immunity and defensive runes like Rafisia, Michaela, or the other uh, supporters. The result depends on the buffs of both sides. For defense side, at least they should have Rafisia's buff. And the actual damage from Christina's normal attack should be covered by the healing. Or they will trigger Christina's third skill and get killed. Let's conclude for Christina. When we are on the attack side and encounters the enemy's power lane, then she can probably kill some key units of the opponent like Nadas or Christina or some supporters. If she encounters the enemy defense lane or in the second round, her task would be removing annoying defenders. And when we encounter her in the Guild Wars and Underground Arena, you can block her with Angelica, Delvi, or high skill level Livia, or uh, use Cecilia, sacrifice her to protect other units, or use the Bomber Mans to trade with her. Yes, we can also use Lexless to pull her away while we are on the defense side. Now we go on with Glacier. 75 crit rate and crit damage. With Rafisia's buff, both will be around 100%. That ensures her reflect counter damage, being able to kill most soft attackers. Her HP is less than 6000, and defense is only 10%. Not very decent being a defender. Let's check her skills. Skill, her second skill changed at plus 15, so we go straight to plus 14. Her reflect damage is unremovable, and at plus 15, reflect 150% incoming damage to the enemy. 
Considering her crit rate and crit damage, it would be almost 3 times the incoming damage. She will boost defense by 80% after receiving normal attack for one turn. She has 10% defense herself, so it's easy for her to get 100% defense against additional damage. But thing is, uh, Barbara plus 15's additional damage ignores defense, and her defense boost skill is not unremovable. And it triggers after being attacked, so it can be prohibited. So her defense boost would be removed by Vazi and get prohibited by Angelica. She has no chance to survive. Dalvi Onatas, considering her low HP, even less than Cecilia, she has no chance to survive either, not to mention Lavia. So this skill is useless at plus 14, she can survive almost no meta units. That's why we shouldn't use her before plus 15. At plus 15, her second skill changes into a discard like protection for one turn after getting normal attack, and it cannot be removed and prohibited. All additional damage after the first normal attack would be ignored in the same turn. For example, Christina goes to Glacier and deals the first normal attack. And after that, all the 5 additional damage and the remaining 4 normal attacks as well as the bleeding damage in the same turn would be 0. Then let's check the list again. Barbara, Livia, Angelica and Delvi, all of them rely on their additional damage after normal attack and that's ignored and Glacier can block them and survive. There are three ways to remove Glacier effectively. The first way, hyper buffed normal attack like Natas, Vazi, Adin, and Taylor. Yes, we still have Alec. And Alec, Taylor, and Adin will trade while high skill level Natas will survive. Adin can survive after plus 15 update and Alec and Taylor can survive after Veronia's update and get buffed by Veronia. For Valzi, we might need plus 9 for more buffs herself. Of course she can survive, but will get frozen. It'll be easier to remove Glacier after Veronia's update. The second solution is additional damage over turn or DOT which can deal tons of damage after the attacking turn. The former one includes Foxy and Hijun, and the latter one includes Christina, Kyria and Wester and so on. In this list, only Christina plus 15 can survive without defense buff from Veronia. A friend asked me what if Glacia gets Michaela's buff and being immune to DOT damage? We don't need to worry about it. The first solution still works and Foxy or Higgins damage over turns is not DOT damage, cannot be immune. Furthermore, we have the third solution. Additional damage before or without normal attack. For example, we can trade a plus 9 or plus 10 as mode with her, or later with Veronia's buff, as mode can survive. Or Ventana, she can kill a taunting glacier easily. If she receives Michaela or Rafisia's buff, we can also kill her with the Wan. Both of their additional damage are before normal attack, and Glacier's God is not triggered at all. This is the list of the probably popular solutions in the near future. In the first row, all of them can survive, but for Adin, we still need to wait for his update. Legend units are hard to build, so Christina is the only cheap version. That's why we should build Christina first. She's the best solution to Glacier before Veronia's update. 
and in the second row, they can trade with Glacier. If we want to um, survive, we might need several more months until Veronia updated. That's all of my analysis about Christina and Glacier. If you like this video, just press the button and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.